welcome to the NASCAR Field Filler Podcast, where you can get the latest results, fantasy picks, and news every week in the NASCAR racing world. We just got one more spot left to fill, so let's give it to our host. Here he is, Vanilla Wafers. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the back of the field. This is Vanilla Wafers, and thank you for tuning in to the Field Filler Podcast. We just got done with week number two of the playoffs as NASCAR made the return to Kansas Motor Speedway. We had a full action pack weekend with the Truck Series, x Fandy Series, and the Cup Series, and all the races provided kind of a unique spin during this playoff weekend. Well, minus the X-Fanity Series. The X-Fanity Series ended abruptly, and it's also not their playoffs. We'll talk about that in a bit. But the Cup Series race and Truck Series race had big indications according to the playoffs. In the Cup Series, we had a lot of drivers run into some problems, and then once again, we had a non-playoff driver win a race. I Don't think this has ever happened ever since the concept of the race for the chase all the way to the playoffs that we have had two drivers not in championship contention win the first two races. It's unbelievable. So we got a lot to talk about here. We will first start off with the truck series and then move on to the main event, which was the cup series to happen on Sunday. I just want to let you guys know just a quick little update. I am feeling a lot better. So thank you goodness for that because I hated sounding so crappy on the microphone and doing editing for the episode that we just had to do the Kansas Fantasy Picks and I just felt like it wasn't a good video. So thank goodness I feel a lot better today. Hopefully I don't get sick anytime soon. So without further ado, let's dive into it. We know what we all want to talk about. We want to talk about the biggest takeaways. What were some of the biggest moments? What were some of the most disappointing moments? Let's first start off with the Friday race. It's time to look at the final results for the Kansas Lottery 200. Alrighty, so in this race, we had a total of 38 trucks enter into the race, which meant two trucks failed to qualify, those two trucks being the number 26 of Tate Fogelman and the number 14 truck of Trey Hutchins. We had a total of four cautions for 25 laps, two of them being stage conclusions, the other two being to incidents out on the racetrack, and 11 lead changes among six different drivers. It was a very close finish there near the end. It was down between two drivers. Big playoff indication. But in the end, the winner of the race was the number four of John Hunter Nemechek for Kyle Busch Motorsports, collecting a big victory here at Kansas Speedway, leading 88 laps and winning both the stages, sweeping everything. He is your winner here of the Kansas Lottery 200. Finishing second was the number 42 of Carson Hosefar, oh so close once again to winning a race. Finishing third, we had the number 17 of Ryan Priest. In the fourth position was the number 38 of Zane Smith. Finishing fifth, we had the number 23 of Grant Enfinger. Finishing sixth was the number 18 of Chandler Smith. And the seventh spot was the number 51 of Corey Heim. Finishing eighth was the number 66 of Ty Majeski. Ninth place, the number 91 of Kobe Howard. And rounding out the top 10, we have the number 98 of Christian Eckes. Some eligible drivers who finished outside the top 10 that we should mention. Finishing 11th was the number 75 of Parker Kligerman. Then you got Ben Rhodes in the number 99, finishing 13th. Matt Crafton in the number 88 finishes 15th. Then moving down the roster, finishing 20th, we have the number 52 of Stuart Friesen. Haley Deegan in the number 1 finishes 22nd. Derek Cross barely finishes in front of her in the 21st position. Then moving down the roster, we got Bailey Curry in the number 44, finishing 27th. Spencer Boyd in the number 12, finishes 33rd, multiple laps down. And then rounding out the field, out by lap number 73 due to engine issues, we have the number 22 truck of Brett Moffitt. Unfortunately, his engine gives out on the exit of turn 4 on lap number 72-73, and he will be credited with a 36th position overall here in this race. And as the final results here for the Kansas Lottery 200 at Kansas Speedway. So for all the fans who did not know, this was an elimination race here in the truck series. They go from 10 trucks down to 8 trucks. So there was a lot of implications on who was going to move on to the next round according to the final few laps because, like I said, the finish was really close between first and second of John Hunter Nemechek and Carson Hosefar as Hosefar was leading with just two laps to go. In fact, he led going into the last lap. And Carson Hosefar, this would have been his first victory. And then wouldn't you know, no, he ran out of fuel going down the back straightaway, handing the victory to the number four of John Hunter Nemechek. 
as he gets another victory here in the 2022 season. I know it's been a bit of an off year for John Hunter Nemechek, but clearly here in the playoffs, he is showing that he is one of the top contenders for the championship, moving into the round of eight with a lot of momentum. Good job for the number four team. Meanwhile, with Carson Hosefar, that was the worst thing that could have happened to him because since he was not able to get the victory, he could not get an immediate uh, wave on to the next round. So... He gets eliminated because the people he had to beat was the number 98 of Christian Eckes as well as the number 88 of Matt Crafton. He was able to beat Matt Crafton, but not Christian Eckes. Even though he finishes second and Eckes finishes 10th, due to stage finishes and great stage finishes by the number 98 truck, he is able to score six more points than Josefar. And Josefar needed to catch up on points, so he gets eliminated in the first round. Big disappointment for Josefar, and during his post-interview, I could not believe what he said. He basically said that his first win will never come. Gosh, you hate to see a driver kind of that down and out, but you know what? He'll crawl back. He's definitely a talented driver. Nice Motorsports has may have lost a lot of performance in the last couple of years, but Josefar still does a lot in that number 42 truck. I will be very surprised if all of a sudden he's not a contender for a victory throughout the rest of the races through 2022. There's only just a couple races left. I think they only have four races here for the truck series. Yeah, they have a lot shorter schedule than the Xfinity series and cup series. But still, I can see him as a front competitor at all those races here coming up. So let's hope for that. But for now, unfortunately, once again, Carson Josefar will not be running for a championship here in the 2022 season. Now let's talk about the other driver who got eliminated, Matt Crafton. Matt Crafton, the three-time Truck Series champion, was never really a factor at all here in the playoffs or this season as a whole. No victories, no front finishes, just rough, rough all around for this number 88 team. But they did make it into the playoffs and they did absolutely nothing. I don't know about you guys, but... I have a feeling that this 88 truck and Matt Crafton will not be together that much longer. Next year might be the last year for Matt Crafton. If it isn't, it might be the end of this season. Hopefully that's not the case since Matt Crafton is a longtime staple here in the truck series. And I don't want to see him go out like this because this is a just a bad, bad uh, season overall for that team. But you know what? They didn't perform. And he said in his interview, he's like, we sucked. We just sucked. And, and I hate to see drivers really talk that down about their team. But honestly, they didn't perform. Thor Sports did not have any good trucks here in this race. The only one that ran decently was Ty Majeski, But Ty Majeski has been decently running in the top eight for the entire season. Everyone else, they have some good races here and there. Ben Rhodes typically has the better races. But Matt Crafton, just no performance at all. And just struggled this year. So we'll see what happens in the future here for this number 88 truck. But he is the second car to get eliminated here in the playoffs. And he finished one lap down this race. Wasn't a front runner at all. And with this two ninth place finishes and stages. Yeah, they weren't here to perform. So those are the two trucks that get eliminated. Meaning that the points will get reset here in the truck series. Leaving these drivers left in the round of eight here for the truck series playoffs. In the first spot will be the number 38 of Zane Smith. He will start out 24 points above the cut line. With Chandler Smith who also got a victory here in the round of 10. He sits 15 points above the cut line. John Hernemacek, the most recent winner, will sit 11 points above. Then you got Ben Rhodes in the number 99. He will be only 4 points ahead of the cutoff. Stuart Friesen in the number 52 will start off in the 5th spot, 4 points behind, followed by Ty Majeski in the number 66. He will be 9 points behind. And then sharing the 7th spot, we have the number 23 of Grant Enfinger and the number 98 of Christian Eckes. They will both be 10 points behind the cutoff line. Overall, this race was a decent race. Uh, really the only focus was the drivers who were trying to make it into the cutoff. They were mostly focusing on Matt Kraft and Christian Eckes as well as Carson Hosevar. John Heron Nemechek was hands down the most dominant driver and the last 20 laps was pretty exciting because of the fuel strategy that Carson Hosevar tried to pull to try to sneak away with a victory here at Kansas just didn't work out. So an all right race but overall the most important thing was that it was an elimination race and he had two drivers eliminated and these will be the eight drivers moving on for the championship battle. Now let's move on to the Xfinity Series race. It is time to dive into the Kansas Lottery 300, the 25th race of the Xfinity Series 2022 season. 
Alrighty, so in this race, we had 39 cars enter into this race, meaning only one car failed to qualify. Unfortunately, it is the number 13 team once again. Akinora Ogata, I hope I said that name right. I felt like I said that last time, but he did not qualify into this race and unfortunately missed it once again here for Business Management Motorsports. We had a total of four cautions for 18 laps and the race ended under rain and they immediately called this race after just 93 laps but since stage one and two were completed i guess they could call the race so by god did they do it six lead chains amongst four different drivers and in the end though it was noah gregson able to get the win for stage number two which happened to be the victory overall in the race gets his fifth victory of the season and he is your winner here of the kansas lottery 300 at kansas speedway Finishing second, we have the number 7 of Justin Allgaier. Finishing third was number 54 of Ty Gibbs. Finishing fourth was the number 19 of Brandon Jones. Finishing fifth, we have the number 48 of Ross Chastain. Finishing sixth, we have the number 16 of AJ Allmendinger. Finishing seventh was the number 8 of Josh Berry. In the eighth spot is the number 18 of Sammy Smith. Finishing ninth was the number 1 of Sam Mayer. And then rounding out the top 10, we have the 07 of Brett Moffitt. Some noticeable drivers finished outside the top 10 that we need to mention. Finishing 11th was Sheldon Creed with his partner Austin Dillon and right behind him in the 12th position. Landon Castle in the number 10 finishes 13th, followed by Ryan Sieg in the number 39 finishing 14th, and then finishing 15th, we have the number 11 of Daniel Hemrick. Brandon Brown in the 0-2 was able to finish in the 17th position. Jeremy Clements in the number 51 finishes one lap down in this race. He finishes 21st overall. And then moving down the roster, we have the number 45 of Raha Karuth. He finishes 25th overall in this race. Dylan Bassett was able to qualify for this race in the number 77 car. He finishes 29th overall. You got Ryan Vargas returning to the 6th, finishing 33rd. And then rounding out the field in the 38th position, out due to engine issues on lap number 51, we have the number 20. Of Jeb Burton. And that is your final results here for the Kansas Lottery 300 at Kansas Speedway. I don't know how much I can really say about this race because it was really over before it really began. We had stage one, dominated by Ty Gibbs. Then we had stage two, dominated by Ty Gibbs and Noah Gregson. And yes, they had themselves a good little battle there near the end of the race, them as well as Justin Allgaier in the final restart, but other than that, I mean, the rain was coming, and I felt like this was really the only big battle that was going on, and then right when stage two ended, they they called the race. They were like, okay, we're done with the Xfinity series, moving on to Sunday. I, I, it wasn't really that quick, but man, what was it, like less than an hour before they finally called it? Like, they gave it no chance. They were like, well, we could run under the lights because it is Kansas Speedway, and Kansas Speedway does have the lights. But nah, screw that. Just give it to Noah Gregson. This is not even a playoff race. Who gives a damn? Who else was going to win? Justin Allgaier? Ty Gibbs? Brandon Jones? Pfft, they already got victories. That won't be anything exciting. I, I don't know. I'm being a little bit um, of a jerk on this one, but I don't know. I, I just wanted to see this race continue, and I felt like the rain would clear up, is from what I was hearing, that it was clearing up pretty quickly, but no, they were. They decided to just call it. Uh, as far as watching the highlights go, you can watch Noah Gregson, Justin Allgaier, and Ty Gibbs duke it out for the final few laps, but honestly, nothing really that exciting here happened in this race. It's kind of definitely one, one of those ones you can skip over. I mean, big congrats to Noah Gregson. Ever since he got that um, contract with Petty GMS, he's all of a sudden just been kicking ass. I mean, three wins in the last seven races. And I, and I feel like after that whole uh, stint that happened at Road America, everything just changed for this team. He got his crap together. And thank goodness because, man, he is just kicking ass right now. And what a great way to go into the Cup Series as a full-time driver if you're able to win the championship here in the Xfinity series. That would be big. Now let's look at the playoffs since we only have one race remaining before the playoffs kick in here for the Xfinity series. Yes, they are still in the regular season. They don't run nearly as many races in the playoffs as they do in the Cup series and in the Truck series is just very extended out. I think they started their playoffs at the beginning of August. That's just how long it lasts for the Truck series. So here's the drivers locked in. You got Noah Gregson and Ty Gibbs locked in with five victories apiece. Justin Allgaier has three wins this year followed by AJ Allmendinger with also three wins then you got Josh Berry and Austin Hill with two victories Brandon Jones with one victory all these drivers are locked in 
due to their victories. And then by points, you got Sam Mayer locked in as well as Riley Herbst. These are the three drivers right now in the playoffs, but they're not locked in quite yet. You got Daniel Hemrick above the cut line by 50 points, so unless something happens in the Bristol race, I'm pretty sure he's going to be good. Landon Castle also sits above by 32 points. Again, maybe not as nearly as good as a cushion as Daniel Hemrick, but again, all he has to do is stay out of trouble. This is where things get interesting. It's down between these two drivers unless we get a person to get a victory outside the top 12. And that is between Ryan Sieg and Sheldon Creed. There's only a 13 point difference between these two. Sheldon Creed slowly but surely has been catching up ever since the Daytona incident happened with him where he unfortunately got caught up in an incident. The last couple of races though, he's been slowly but surely making big grounds on Ryan Sieg and now it's just 13 points. Now, Sheldon Creed's going to have to have himself a really good race at Bristol. Could he be able to do it? I really think so. I mean, especially with the forward momentum that RCR has. But Ryan Sieg, it's just best for him to just hang around the top 10, maybe collect a couple stage points here and there. And he'll be able to race for a championship here in the x Fandy Series playoffs. So keep an eye on that. That is the biggest battle right now, unless we have a surprise winner. But honestly, I don't feel that one happening as the drivers who have already got victories are going to be the drivers competing for the victory at Bristol. Now moving on, let's move on to the big race that happened on Sunday. This is the one that everyone's been waiting for. It is now time to dive in to the final results for the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so in this race we had a total of 36 cars enter into the race, only the charter cars once again. I feel like it's going to be like that all the way until minus Talladega, the Charlotte Roval, and Phoenix. We had a total of 9 cautions for 43 laps in a race that was 267 laps and 16 lead changes amongst 12 different drivers. Definitely the next gen car has been favorable here at these mile and a half tracks. They've been really really fun and there's been a lot of unpredictability on who's going to win the race. In the end, though, we have another non-playoff driver get a victory here in the 2022 playoffs. The driver of the number 45 machine. It was Kurt Busch earlier this year. Now it is Bubba Wallace getting his second victory of his career, his first victory here in the 2022 season after leading 58 laps. He's your winner here in the 2311 racing machine for the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas. Finishing second was his team owner, the number 11 of Denny Hamlin. Finishing third was the number 20 of Christopher Bell, followed by the number 48 of Alex Bowman. Then you have the number 19 of Martin Trex Jr. finishing fifth. In the sixth spot was the number 24 of William Byron. Finishing seventh was the number one of Ross Chastain. In the eighth spot, we have the number five of Kyle Larson. Finishing ninth was the number 12 of Ryan Blaney. And then round right at the top 10, you have the number 99 of Daniel Suarez. Finishing outside the top 10, we got Chase Elliott in the number nine and 11th. 12th the number two of Austin Sendrick, 13th the number 14 of Chase Briscoe, finishing 14th was the number three of Austin Dillon, 15th the number 17 of Chris Busher. In the 16th position, you got the number 34 of Michael McDowell, 17th the number 22 of Joey Logano, 18th the number 16 of Noah Gregson, finishing 19th was his teammate, the number 31 of Justin Haley, and then rounding out the top 20, you have the number 42 of Ty Dillon. Some noticeable drivers who finished outside the top 20 that we need to mention, finishing 26, we have the number 18 of Kyle Busch gets into a late race spin out and just never fully recovers. He finishes two laps down in this race. Then you got Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He finishes fourth in the first stage, but unfortunately gets a flat tire and takes him out of contention. He finishes 30th overall, five laps down. And then here near the back, some big names. You got Ty Gibbs in number 23 out due to an accident on lap 90. Tyler Reddick wrecks as the leader on lap number 67. He is out, finishes 35th. And then rounding out the field, another accident. This time on lap number 33 and a playoff driver, the number four of Kevin Harvick. He'll be credited with a 36th position overall here in this race. And that is your final results for the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas Speedway. Now, for the Truck Series race and the X-Fandy Series race, I could have kept it really, really brief. I mean, really. There wasn't too many ups and downs to really talk about in those races. Truck Series was just focused on mostly three drivers, with John Hunter Niemicek being the special guest, getting the victory of the race. X-Fandy Series, it was just really two drivers. Noah Gregson, Ty Gibbs, with... Justin Allgaier kind of flirting with potentially getting the victory, but we all knew it was going to be between those two. And then rain comes in, and then that race is over. 
Here in the Cup Series race, that was not the case as there was so much passing going on throughout the entire race. And once again, we get a good old fashioned race where we cannot predict the winner at the very beginning. And that is something that I really appreciate. You could have had seven different drivers wind up in victory lane here in this race. It was extremely impressive. And once again, this next gen car just delivers here at a mile and a half track. Remember when mile and a half tracks were so hated in the NASCAR community? I think they're still hated to this day, but still here with this next gen car, it kind of makes you just a little bit happy to know that the next race coming up could be a mile and a half. I mean, think of some of the more exciting races of the year. The Coke Cole 600? Are you kidding me? Usually the Coke Cole 600 is one of those races that people tend to find a little boring. It was one of the most exciting races of the year. Las Vegas? Man, that was an interesting one. And then we got another one coming up, which, by the way, I will be at. So I'm pretty excited about that one. Texas? Ah, Texas sucks no matter what you do with it. But we come here to another mile and a half track here, which is Kansas, which is a track that kind of looks a little bit more fondly than other mile and a half. But it delivers with a great race. And how about Bubba Wallace getting into victory lane? Now, I know that the 45 car was fast in the spring race, but I think this is the first time ever that we saw the same car number sweep the year at a racetrack with different drivers. If that's happened, that is pre-modern NASCAR. I, I really do believe that. It is very crazy that this happened, but Bubba Wallace had a lot of opportunities to win the spring race. The only problem was his pit crew kind of let him down in that race. That wasn't the case in this race. He got paired up with a great pit crew, and everything just really did work out. Actually, I think it's his old pit crew, so... They are able to redeem themselves and give Bubba Wallace his first win at a mile and a half track. His other win came at a super speedway at Talladega. Unfortunately, the rain came in. So a few fans kind of gave it a, oh, he, that's just a gimme win. That doesn't really count. Well, this one does count. And he earned it. And man, for them to switch drivers for this number 45 car for the owner's championship, I mean, he advanced on into the round of 12. So that was a definitely a good move by Denny Hamlin, Michael Jordan, and all of 2311 racing. So good job for Bubba Wallace. He is able to get a win here at Kansas and just sh shock the NASCAR community. I mean, these playoff drivers, yeah, some of them have looked really good here in these first two races. But the fact that we've had the 43 car win the first race, and then the 45 car win the second race. It's like, who's going to win the Bristol race? Is Martin Trex Jr. going to come out of nowhere and get that victory? That'd be huge. I don't think we've ever seen a round where no playoff drivers get a victory. Hell, wouldn't that be the craziest thing ever? Now let's talk about some of these playoff drivers. Let's first talk about the drivers who really struggled here in this race. Of course, we got to talk about the number four of Kevin Harvick. Now... I remember saying Kevin Harvick was going to get eliminated in the round of 16. I did not think he was going to be running this bad. I thought, eh, maybe he's going to be a little bit slower, maybe running around 17th, 18th. I didn't expect a wreck at both Darlington as well as Kansas. Like, I can't predict that. I, I, I literally can't take any credit for that. This is just really bad luck for this number four team and for them to wreck that early in the race, which was caused by Ross Chastain and Bubba Wallace. He had nowhere to go, hits the wall, and that was just the end of his day. Man, oh man, talk about just a complete 180 from the beginning of August. They get two wins, and now all of a sudden, they can't even get a victory right now. So now he's in a must-win situation at Bristol. Now, last year, he was really fast at Bristol. However, he pissed off Chase Elliott, which I don't think he's going to try to do this time. And also, secondly, this is the next-gen car. Last year was the Gen 6 car, so we shall see what will happen for that number 4 machine. But as of right now, things are not looking good for Kevin Harvick and Stuart Haas Racing as a whole. As Chase Briscoe didn't really do anything in this race either. Like, yeah, he finished 13th, but that was the highest running position he had in the entire race. So I'm not feeling too confident about either of these Stuart Haas Racing cars advancing into the next round. Two drivers that did really impress me in this race was Christopher Bell in the number 20 and the number 48 of Alex Bowman. Christopher Bell is kind of showing everyone that he is the top performing uh, Joe Gibbs racing car right now. Uh, he did great at Darlington and he did great here at Kansas, scored the most fantasy points out of any of the playoff drivers with 53 points and he ran comfortably up front the entire time. Like there was no mistake that Christopher Bell was going to be a front runner and potentially going for the victory here near the end. Now, unfortunately for him, his car running at its worst was near the end of the race, but that's a third position. 
that just shows you how good this number 20 car is right now. Just a phenomenal run. If he can keep this consistency going, whoo, man. He is going to have a comfortable ride all the way into the semifinals, maybe even potentially the finals at this rate. So great job for that number 20 team. I remember just a couple years back when they had Eric Jones in the 20 car and they had one of the most abysmal round of 16s in NASCAR recent memory. I think in those three races, they scored a total of four points, four points. What year was that? I can't even remember, but it was not that long ago. It was just a terrible performance by them. Now, granted, I think they finished fourth at Richmond, and then the 20 car was the only car that did not pass post-race inspection, so they got credited with the last position. But still, four points to now doing this with Christopher Bell. Yeah, there was a reason why Toyota wanted Christopher Bell to move into this 20 car as quickly as possible because, gosh, he is a talented racer running really good here and what most people thought was the fourth best car in Joe Gibbs Racing. So great job by him and Alex Bowman in the number 48. Now, Alex Bowman is definitely an interesting driver when it comes to these mile and a half tracks. I mean, he got his first victory at a mile and a half. It was Chicagoland, and then the track just all of a sudden disappeared from the schedule. Las Vegas, he randomly gets the win earlier this year, which locks him into the playoffs. And now he comes here at Kansas, wins stage two, leads 107 laps, just a really fast car for that number 48 team. I will not be surprised if he can do the same at Las Vegas. And you know what? Because of this great performance, he might be able to move his way into the round of 12. I thought he was going to be eliminated in the first round because he really wasn't showing me anything. But my buddy, William Richard, who you can find on Twitter at NASCAR underscore opinion, he said himself, Alex Bowman finds a way to get into the round of 12 every single year. And he did it once again with a very, very good performance here at Kansas. Well, hold on. Maybe I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself. We still got Bristol. But right now, giving himself that much of a points gap above the cut line in front of other drivers, definitely something this 48 team needed. And right now, things are looking good for him. As a good run for Henrik Motorsports in that number 48 machine, but not a good run for the other cars like the number 9 of Chase Elliott and the number 5 of Kyle Larson. They were never factors in this race, and I said Kyle Larson was going to win the race. Of course, I've said that about multiple races where I try to predict the winner, and I've never been right about it. But still, they weren't even factors at all. Chase Elliott didn't even finish in the top 10. And at one point, uh, he was at best a fifth-place car. And then Kyle Larson, not even a fifth-place car. He, he finished seventh in Stage 2, and he ran around between the 8th and 12th position. They did not perform at all. And William Byron, he did actually decent in this race. He ran near the fronts, and that was exactly what this team needed. So good run for him. But man, Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott, they just did not deliver. And that doesn't make me feel too comfortable about them going into the next few races. Maybe they just were just taking it easy. I don't know. But man, in a playoff race, you want to bring your best equipment. And I really didn't feel like Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson brought it at all. Good to see Trackhouse Racy make steps in the right direction, get both of their cars in the top 10 with Ross Chastain in 7th, as well as Daniel Suarez in the 10th position. As it may not be what we saw earlier this year, at least it's a step in the right direction, as neither of them have been really getting top 10s lately, but for them to finally get a good finish here, Daniel Suarez is still in a rough spot as he's right around the cutoff line to make it into the round of 12. At least Ross Chastain puts something together here near the end and gets himself a comfortable 34 points, nothing too crazy, but definitely Definitely something in the right direction and to get a top 10 that's what track house needed so they move into bristol and a little bit better odds than what most people thought now we go to kyle bush in the number 18 and joey logano in the number 22 kyle bush man i i think he just can't wait to make the announcement because he just said that he has a press conference being held at the nascar hall of fame on tuesday so probably when you guys are listening to this, you will be tuning on over to hear that Kyle Busch has made his announcement for the 2023 season, which right now everything is pointing to Richard Childress Racing. Never would have thought that that was an option, but here we are, and he once again gets a really bad finish, and I don't know what's going to happen at Bristol. I mean, he's good at Bristol. He is good. Even in the dirt, he somehow gets a victory. So we'll see how he does in this Bristol race, but my goodness, another bad race, and it was just abysmal after that spin out he had nothing so Kyle Busch gets it down in this race Joey Logano has a decent car at the beginning and then all of a sudden everything falls apart which once again brings up the my thought that hey he might run really good in this race 
but at the same time, he has a hard time finishing, and then he does it here near the end, where he's not even a contender at all, just the car all of a sudden falls apart, and he can't even finish on the lead lap. Let's do a quick run through through the rest of the playoff drivers. Uh, Denny Hamlin, number 11, rough first half, great second half. They ran to a bunch of pit road penalties, and they were able to recover, and he almost wins the race. If it was about probably 10 more laps to go, he would have been able to get past Bubba Wallace, so at least they get a good finish. The number 12, Ryan Blaney, eh, runs consistently in the top 10, exactly what they needed, just a cool, calm race, and that's exactly what they did. Austin Sindrick, I kind of figured he was going to be running around between the 12th and 15th position. Fortunately, didn't get any stage points that affected him, but a decent race with Austin Dillon right behind him in the 14th position. Wish he could have done a little bit better. I was expecting maybe 11th or 10th place finish. He just was not able to do that. And overall, this race, lots of fun. Big up was a lot of passing going on throughout the entire race. A down was the tire issue that was going on, and it felt like multiple drivers suffered tire issues, including Tyler Reddick, who got a flat tire in the first position. He led 38 laps. He was going to be a front runner, and unfortunately this happens. Now it puts him in a situation where he has to run really good at Bristol, or he could potentially miss out on the playoffs and get eliminated in the first round. I hope that that's not the case, because I got Tyler Reddick going far. Hell, I think I had him going to the final four in one of my picks. I, I It could be a really good playoff run, but if he misses it in the first round, that'll be tragic for this number eight team. And then also, like, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had flat tire issues, Ty Gibbs. I think Corey LaJoy had a flat tire at one point. It just everyone got a flat tire, and that's a big down. I mean, Goodyear should be doing better than that. And then the biggest up, obviously, is going to go to 23-11 and the number 45 of Bubba Wall. I mean, they needed a good race here, and how about a victory and a way to sweep Kansas Speedway in the 2022 season? Nobody predicted that for the number 45 car. If you want to watch the replays, I definitely would because there was a lot of exciting racing going on throughout the entire race, especially if you tuned in at the halfway point. It was a lot of fun to watch these cars run around the racetrack, and just proves the show Next Gen just loves mile and a halfs. will conclude the final results for today's episode guys thank you so much for listening as far as the fantasy league went we had quite a few people score 200 plus points nine fantasy teams were able to go over the 200 point mark so great job for you guys here's the top three turn sheen once again wins a week and that's two weekends in a row for turn sheen he is definitely turning up the burners here as he scored 236 points with his fantasy team congratulations to you finishing second once again back to back it's vanilla wafers and i am pissed about it i'm trying to get the upper edge on turn sheen because he's in first and i'm obviously in second i need to get an advantage here I guess I'll try again at Bristol. And then finishing third, we have Fantastic Fusion at 228 points. These were your top three here in the Fantasy League at NASCAR Field Fillers League at fantasygames.nascar.com. It's been a lot of fun with all you guys joining in. And as far as the playoffs go, in the first position is Turn Sheen, second is me, and third is Fantasy Fusion. And then overall, it's Turn Sheen. Then it's me, and it's Thundergun 3 in third. So it's been a lot of fun with you guys. It's starting to close up really close here for the top three in both the playoffs as well as the overall run. So again, uh, NASCAR Field Fillers League, fantasygames.nascar.com. Maybe a little late to join in and try to win at this point, but still, if you still want to join in and put a lot of fun, if you get a top three, you get a shout out here on the podcast, as well as TikTok, where I am at Vanilla Wafers 44 just mostly going to focus on NASCAR therapy right now. Maybe I'll do some funner videos where it's like, I don't know, maybe guess the driver that I'm thinking of or something like that. I might do something different on there because everything else I've been putting on there that for some reason, TikTok hates me on there. I don't know why. Stupid bots. Or you can follow me on YouTube, where I have no problems there, at Vanilla Wafers 44 where I'm getting ready to post a new video here coming up. It's going to be called NASCAR's Most Hated Rules. And I can't wait to share this one, because I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun. Just jabbing at some rules NASCAR has come up with over the years. Uh, I think I talk about five rules on this one, so that should be coming in within the next week. Or then you can follow me on Twitter at TylerV33, where we can talk during the race, as I usually don't do too many tweets during the race but if anyone asks me or shares anything with me i'll immediately respond trust me 
to any of the fans who have done that, I do that as fast as I can. But above all, guys, thank you so much for listening to the best and trying out all the rest. I have been able to fill up the last few remaining minutes of your time, so I'm going to take the car and pull it right on into pit road, collect my last place winnings, and I am out. So you all take care. This has been the Field Filler Podcast.